Right guys, onto the flesh. Um, first of all, there was a couple of black spots so I put black paint on, so we'll put the base colour down again on bits that uh, look like they need it. Let's uh, go under the chin. I'll give you the colour in a minute because I can't remember if I told you or not. Right, the uh, colour for these ones, fellas, and fellerets, is get it on the camera, Gav, yet again, 129, sorry, 70.929. I never know which one they actually actually mean when they put these different numbers down. Uh, light brown, it gives you a really nice base to work on on most figures of any, any size. Um, and the first highlight we're going to go for. Is uh, medium flesh if I can find it, which is fairly, you know, most of you guys probably know this one. It's a well worn bottle, this. Probably one of my oldest ones. Medium flesh. Um, I'm going to turn off for a second because I'm going to have to dry this face with the, the hairdryer. I'll be back in a minute. Right, so we've uh, dried our face off. And we're going to use our medium flesh tone first. Again, take off the access. The good thing, uh, it depends on the figures. Um, I'm not going to start saying other manufacturers, only this one. Uh, now this is a front rank figure and they're well known for having really well defined faces. You know, they've got the creases uh, which really, which will really help you um, plan your face out, if that makes sense. You know, you're not going to you're not going to struggle too much for a, for a beginner. You know, you've, you've got something, you haven't got just like a faceless, you know, either something really smooth or, you know, just a, a, a well, you're not a particularly well sculpted face. Um, they've got nice cheekbones, the cheeks in general, the eye sockets. Uh, and how much you put into them again is, is, is up to you. But they are very nice figures to especially for a beginner to if you really want to do your face you know upgrade your faces or use them as a first figure to practice on what we've done there is put our first highlight on leaving the eye sockets uh, fairly deep we will be putting, hopefully putting the eyes on I'll, I'll attempt to do them on camera or you know me, I'll be probably talking away and I completely miss, you won't see a thing, but uh, I will attempt to do it on camera. Um, you don't have to go you know, over the top with it. You don't have to put any eyes in at all, you can just leave a shadow area. There's always the discussion of, would eyes be seen at this scale? Um, I actually do them sometimes, depending on just on the sculpt itself, uh, the manufacturer, some, as I say, some have got very smooth faces and you're really working hard to, no matter how, how well propor proportioned and the movement in them and all the rest of it, sometimes they're just a bit too smooth to, to you know, you're really having to paint in detail, so sometimes it's better just to leave it out. We're going to put some uh, dots on the, the highest points again. And anything that you think is catching the light. But a, a, a nice flesh look, whether it's whether it's on the face or the hands, it really does a lot for a figure. If the figure isn't, you know, hasn't got a lot going for it, in just in even in uniform, you know, it, it just might not have a, a uniform that catches the eye. But you know, a nice a nice paint job on the. Did I do that here? A nice paint job will really help you lift the figure up. Now we can't see that uh, back of his hand underneath 
there, but we'll just put the. I bet you can't even see it. We'll put the brush down there as well. Now that's our medium. So now we're going on to, if we can find the right one, we're going on to flat flesh. 709 looks like double five. Again, we're still using the same same size brush. Again, we're uh, we're knocking off our excess paint. We're doing those high cheekbones again. We're coming down to just below it and putting a couple of dots of colour in because he's got uh, sideburns as well. Uh, we're doing the top lip still. We're doing the nose at the side and at the top. But I'm going to show you a couple of little wrinkles just to just to bring a bit more, you know, a bit more uh, out of the face in a minute. So we've done the flared nostrils. Again, we're working on the other cheek now. Again, it's a, it's a war gaming figure, so you know, again, we're we're fighting with what we want to see. Um, and sometimes the face is where I don't mind going a bit, not over the top, but you know, just um, doing the highlights a bit, a bit higher, if that makes sense, uh, than I might have done on a on a larger scale figure. Right, doing the back of the hands again, high points. Sorry if you hear any noise in the background, that's my wife doing whatever she's doing. And again, we've got a peninsula look, peninsula look going on here anyway, so. So to have it more of a an orangey look, if that makes sense, it's a not too bad a thing. Yeah, I think we'll leave that like that. We're going to go one step higher with sunny, sunny skin tone. Not particularly because it's peninsula, um, just because it, uh, you could just as easily put a bit, a bit of white in that uh, last paint mix we've used. We're going to the ends of the cheeks here with this. This is giving us a bit of... Now I've got my, uh, <laughs> my, my dog's extra, extra hot so he's in panting and clipping around so again I apologise for that. We've got to the end of the nose. I think that's what we... Right, bear me a second guys, I'm going to turn off for a second. Right guys, uh, we've done our basic our basic uh, skin tones on the, on the figure. What we're now going to do, we're just going to put his fingernails in. And for that we're going to use our old friend the uh, the tank uniform white and just do the very tips this gal shakes all over the place uh, you could go down so if they're not too if you don't want them too white like that you could you could go down and uh, and use that silver gray which would uh, which would work probably just as well maybe not as bright again just a tiny little dab
so that's our fingernails done. Now we've got to go for the dreaded eye eyeballs. Now for this, and you don't have to use. I should actually show you a, a larger paintbrush, but this is what I this is my weapon of choice for doing eyeballs, and that's the Army Painter um, Psycho, which is. Can you see? It looks bigger on. No, Gav, get it in. Oh, come on. Here we go. No? All yeah, right. Very, very thin. And it literally is one dab, wash it out quick because it will dry. It's such a tiny, tiny brush. It will dry out um, within a, you know, a couple of seconds. Now these have got eye eye sockets, if that makes sense, quite well defined on the on the front rank figures. And that itself will aid you. I'm gonna go for a second, I've got it more more or less what we're, we're trying hopefully not to get the old the old uh, fried egg syndrome. We'll go for the second one, I'm happy with the first one. We'll tie a dab off there. Of course now we've got to go, you can turn the figure upside down, that can often work as well. Sorry if I'm going off camera. Right, let's have a look and see what that looks like. Very slightly less on the one, the one I've just worked on. We'll give it one more go on that. Sorry guys, there's no way I can uh, make that look any better from camera angles wise. Yep, so we're, uh, we've got our, our white eyeballs in. Um, they'll dry out really quickly because they're, they're obviously really tiny. Um, I don't particularly fancy using black. So what I'll be doing is using some of this uh, dark grey that I've got. If I can scare some up on the palette. It's going to look awful now, watch. <laughs> right, hang on a second. Now all we're doing here, and this is where it often goes wrong. I'm breaking my own rule here because I just wanted to use a paint. Right, now see what I've done. It's almost like a how to, how to repair the damage video. <laughs> uh, right, hang on a second, just let me get myself sorted. Right, what I've done there is on that one you can see a great big blob completely miss the eyeball. So what we do is get our base coat because it's our darkest one. Blow on it a bit just to dry it out. And we're going to put our base just under it without hopefully taking the whole eyeball out which we've managed to... If you can see that, probably not. So what we've got, hopefully, is the figure looking down as he's running. Just needs a tad more base base coat under that eyeball again. So we've retained, we've actually retained the, uh, we've cleaned up the, the overspill of the blue-gray and we've managed to retain the eyeball. Now that's good enough for me. Um, they never look great on close up, but the, the eyeballs there, that's fine for me. Now what we can do, um, I'm just gonna put the hair in now. Sorry, now that's my dog uh, sounding off. Uh, what we're gonna do now is do the the hair, the, the, the sideburns. Um, because I want to tie the face in with a couple of um, washes around the, uh, you know, make him, make him look a bit of a stubbly effect. And again, that'll just uh, bring your, f your figure up more, a bit more. So what we'll do for that is we're going to use the same brown that we used on the, on the musket. Um, but it, we're not actually going to be doing brown. We're going to give him a... Was it redhead, auburn, whatever you want to call it? I don't want to insult anybody out there. But this is going to be our 
our base colour. And it's quite so watered down this one so it will go in all the all the little channels. Clean that off before it goes everywhere. Sideburn itself. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. All right, so I'm just going to put the hair dryer on that, guys, and blow and you know get that dry. <laughs> I'm using the hair dryer on his hair. <laughs> uh, so we'll, I'll dry that out, and then we'll come up with a, uh, another colour. Right guys, uh, ochre brown we're going to be using for the for the hair, and that's seven zero. What's that? Is that a three or an eight? Looks like an eight. Eight five six. I'm slowly I'm slowly getting a pile of uh, Vallejo bottles on my desk at the moment. Um, again, I've used this paint, so it's actually sorry, I've, I've not actually diluted this paint at all. Now this might be too too light, we'll give it a go. It might just work, and I think it is gonna. What I'm after here is not like a a fierce red. And the brown will hope get through. If you can actually see it. Again, it's not great for the brush, I know. There we go. You can either call him a auburn head or very light brown, whatever you want to call it, but um, he's there. Now the next step is going to be, we've got a bit of blue-gray still left. I'm glad I did such a big mix of that. It's coming in handy all, all around the shop. Right, I'm going to put a bit of that blue-gray mix, which, so that's um, Or any any you know like French uniform, First World War grey, you know any any blue grey anyway, uh, and put that. Find a piece of a bit of paint. So we're going to put this in the the sunny skin tone. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, that might work. Again, we're just going for a light stubble effect. Now you could leave the face like that. You know, it's a nice bright. You know, well defined face. I don't mean that big headiness, but you know, it's 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 there. You know, it's it's good enough. Um, but we're gonna see what this looks like. It might need a darker wash on it, but we'll see. A slight blue tinge to it. Might just add a tiny bit of the the actual blue grey. We'll water that down a heck of a lot because what you don't want is that Fred Flintstone look. I mean, it's looking fairly decent to be honest with you, as it is. So I might be going a bit overkill here. We'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Just a bit around the top lip. So always know when to stop really. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to get our, um, by the way this is a good set to get your help, yeah, your mitts on. 
Let's see if we can. Yeah, that's the Vallejo Red oh, Vallejo Andrea Red set that I use. Um, I find that quite good uh, if you because I've got lots of different uh, lots of different reds from different companies. Um, some in collections like this. Uh, I, I, I've got the scale 75, and as I say, scale 75 fantastic for doing my larger figures. But for these guys, I'm really not um, a fan because you have to build up that that colour um, a lot more than you would do, um, say, with a Vallejo. And Vallejos are great, um, but I just I don't know. I just got, got into these reds from Andrea, and they, uh, you know, when I start using up, you know, I'll just start buying them in singles. When I start using up uh, paint. Now this is a danger point here because we're going to give him that bit of a rosy tinge to his cheeks. And this is where it could go all horribly wrong. And we start again from scratch. Uh, right. Let's give it a go. Uh, so this is a normal box, you know, like I'm not going to give the colour here, it's just a, a red for now. Um, any red will do you. Not too dark, not too not too light and we gingerly again I've I've more or less I've more or less taken off all the the paint in the brush without making it a dry brush and I, again you know this is where you, if you're a new guy and girl this is where you're going to have to you know just practice find out what works and what doesn't and so use this as a as a guide and then build your own uh, how things work for you after that. Yeah, I think that's fine. We don't want it more, much more than that. It gives it, you know, you say it might look slightly artificial look. Could say, you know, I was going to say like a toy look, but then again, it's a toy in, it, in its own in its own way. So um, now, while we're on the face, and we need to do that, I always just put a black stock underneath. Often they didn't have them on campaign, but. It's there. So we've got our hair done, our face done. Uh, the only thing that um, I'd like to see probably, and this is again just a tiny, tiny amount, as I showed you that 18 mil way, you know, way back in the first part of the video, uh, I use the the olive green a lot as a as a as a highlight very last highlight on on the AB 18 mil figures just to make them stand out a bit I'm not going to use that on on this this figure on his clothes but I'm going to put just a touch if it works on the plume itself you might say well shouldn't it be the same color but again it's just a bit artistic it's just saying it's that type of woolly material and it's sitting there at the top and it just it could do with just having that bit of lightness to it. Uh, another thing, while we've got a load of spare brown paint, let's find me old I'll use I use my old rough brushes for just about everything. Um, we're gonna we're gonna paint the base. I always paint the bases. Uh, just any brown that you've got, um, even if it's for a desert color. All it is is it just when you're if you're doing multiple. It's not so bad on a, on a single base, but if you're doing multiple bases, it's always hard sometimes to get in afterwards. And you know you always miss a bit where you whatever base is sanding and PVA in like I do. I often miss bits and it's a lot easier just to have that colour there because it will hide up a multitude of sins, all the little holes and stuff. So again, a tip from Gav is you'll always see my bases unless I've forgotten or you see a video where I'll be based, you know, just paint them afterwards. But I always just paint the base as well. Uh, we've also got, just to tidy up this, this uh, bread bag, Now, what else have we got to do? I'm 
trying to beat the battery running out on this one. I'll just clean this guy up first. I think he's okay. Right guys, oh, I think we have to try our hand at. Uh, we'll use our teeny tiny psycho brush again. Using the same uh, tank uniform white. This works and it, sometimes it doesn't. We'll put our war department arrow on. Now obviously they often had company signs and uh, company signs, you know, A, A Co and B Co as in A Company, B Company, all that type of thing. Um, along with the the war department arrow. Doesn't always work for me. Come on, don't show me up on camera now. It's not particularly a great one. Problem is with these is they do the wood effect as well and it's uh, it's not always the easiest to get the scale right as well. I'm slightly off off centre with that as well. No, that's not gonna work for us. So what we can try and do Let's just see if we can scrub that out. I bet it's not going to go. Where it's dried out earlier on when I did the first two halves, that's fine. See how you can use a wet brush just to pick up most of that paint. So it's fine having the the top of the arrow there. That's that was fine. It was the it was the actual bottom of the arrow that uh, wasn't so good. He doesn't want to play balls probably because I've got still got water on the Nah, that's worse now. And that's because I've still got I've still got water around the canteen I'd imagine. So we're gonna go one last try, don't let me down. See how the brush is sucking up the water. Alright, I'll do that off camera. I want to start wrapping this up now, and I'm sure you guys do. <laughs> uh, I should have wrapped up about four hours ago. Right, so that's our figure anyway. 95th Rifles. Uh, there will be a couple of touch-ups I'll do, um, but nothing significant. Oh, yeah, there is one other thing. Um, let's just see. What can we do? I'm not going to do the... Oh, I did have... No. Have I? No. I did have uh, my Osprey book in here, so um, I'm going to leave the backpack clean on this one. Let's not let's not make it any longer than it is. But what you could do, uh, they often had a um, the hunting horn uh, drawn on the back, or just 95, obviously for the 95th, or 95 th on the back. Um, while I'm thinking about it, we'll just go behind that that cartridge box. Tidy up a bit, yeah. Right, let's call that done. So the only thing I've got to do when you see a photograph, I'll have done the, I'll have done the um, the War Department arrow. Uh, things, other things that you could do to pick this this figure up. I mean, camera keeps moving. Uh, other things you could do to pick this uh, this figure up a bit more. Uh, you could uh, put some. Uh, paint on the base of the the uh, the trousers just to show you know dusty or muddy effect of whatever you fancy. Um, it, it's people commonly do mud. It's, it's it's quite often like to do do a nice dusty effect because uh, it's quite you know people again just slot the brown paint on and all that's mud. Um, but you could do a dusty effect. You can put a patch on the. I always suggest the leading knee because it's more prominent, and you could put a patch. Uh, of say brown material from the peninsula that they used a lot from from that. Um, I will be uh, on the photographs. I'm going to have an, just another attempt at, uh, at just highlighting that shako cord up a bit and the, the plume one more time. And I think, guys, that's it for our basic war game figure. Well, basic, you know, just a nice war game figure for the table. 
So I'll stick some photographs up at the end of the video. Uh, now I'm not sure on timings in this, this is going on for hours obviously, so what I might have to do is, after all, like I said at the earlier part of the video, is cut this down into sections with a little brief intro um, and uh, and then right at the end obviously, the last uh, section of the video, I will put some photographs up because uh, I know my lighting isn't the best. So thank you very much for sticking with me. Hopefully uh, as I do more of these uh, we'll get better at it. Um, lighting you'll just have to put up with for now. Uh, there's not much I can do until I've got some money to improve that. Um, camera work, <laughs> they've got this thing that uh, the camera doesn't isn't built, it's more for a phone rather than my camera. So my camera slides ever so gently on the weight and it, it moves it out of, out of vision a lot of the time. I can't, I can't really do much about that um, because as I'm looking down painting it's moving without me realising. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm happy with that as a, as a figure for a tutorial, you know, because um, I say it's not easy to actually do this. So guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for sticking with me and we'll catch each other soon on another video. Cheers.